DNS record types and Route 53 is today's topic. My name's David Staples, and that's coming right up. So in our last video on Route 53, we basically gave you a brief introduction of what the service is. We went through and registered a domain name, w3w3.org, and just kind of told you some, some of the basics about what Route 53 is, right? So today we're going to be taking it a little bit further. We're going to look at the different record types that are available in Route 53. So I've got the domain up that I registered, the hosted zone here. We're going to go ahead and open up w3w3.org. And if you remember, when we first got started, there were two record types already there. We had the NS record, the name server records, which basically define what the name servers are for this specific domain name. Since this is the authoritative name server, we need to define those. And then we have our SOA record, the start of authority record, which is also giving some authoritative information about the domain, uh, also basically stating that this is the home server for it. Now, additionally, we went ahead and created an A record so that we have the domain pointing to an IP address, an IPv4 address more specifically. And then we also created a C name record, which is a name to another name. So I pointed www to the root of the domain or the, to the base domain so that any time that I change the IP address of w3w3.org, I don't also have to change the, the www record as well. The www record being a CNAME record is going to automatically send the traffic to that new host because it's simply pointing to that base domain. So let's go ahead and click on create record here and look at the other record types. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the drop down here for record types. And you can see that we've already talked about the A record, which is just a standard name to an IPv4 address. There's also the quad A record, which is a name to an IPv6 address. Uh, we also have our C name records that we just talked about as well. That is a name to another name. Uh, so one of the ways that I could also use that if I wanted to create a mail server, let's just say, and it was mail.whatever.com, but I also wanted to be able to access it by smtp.whatever.com or pop3.whatever.com or imap.whatever.com. I could use those C name records to point a name to another name. Now, speaking of mail servers, the next record in our list is an MX record. This is our mail exchanger record. Uh, this is something that you're going to want to get that information from whoever you're using for your email services. I use Google Workspace, but you could be using my Office 365 or any number of other platforms for your email, but this is where those records are going to go. And we may see an example of that as I set up an MX record in another video. The next record that we see are TXT records. A lot of times when you're doing things with Google Analytics or some of these other types of programs out there, they may ask you to verify that you own a domain name by setting up a TXT record. The next one is a reverse lookup record known as a PTR record. So that PTR record is going to map an IP address to a domain name, just the reverse of that A record that we had created. The next record is going to be our SRV record. So this essentially has the ability for us to map to certain application servers, even including a port number, so that we can very easily identify where that traffic needs to go. The next one you'll notice is SPF. This is our sender policy framework. This is basically used to help identify that you actually own the domain uh, that you're trying to send emails from. This is one that you'll notice in this dropdown that it says it's not recommended anymore. Uh, Amazon's recommendation now is to actually put that same information into a TXT record to help show that you actually own that domain to help provide that validation or verification. The next one on the list is the NAPTR record. So if you're not familiar with the NAPTR record, you're probably not alone. Chances are though, if you haven't heard of it before, you probably don't need it. But the NAPTR record, I'm going ahead and showing, sharing some information here on the screen. This is a name authority pointer record. It's a type of record used by dynamic delegation discovery systems, applications to convert one value to another or to replace one value with another. Uh, for example, the one common use is to convert phone numbers into SIP URIs. So if you'd like to read more about those, I'll go ahead and include the link for this article in the comments down below. But that leaves us with one last record type here, and that is going to be our CAA record. And this is used to restrict CAs that can create SSL or TLS certificates for this domain. And again, you can read more about that in that same article. You just have to scroll to the CAA section to read more about the CAA record type here if you'd like to. So the last thing that I'm going to mention here is that in addition to those records, we also have this little toggle over here, you'll notice, that says alias. So what exactly is an alias? So aliases are used very similar to C names with AWS to basically point a name 
to an existing resource on AWS where essentially it is creating a resource that's going to typically give you a DNS name, such as you know, whatever.elasticbeanstalk.net, or when you create an S3 bucket, uh, you remember how it gives you a DNS name to be able to access that S3 bucket, right? Same thing when you create a CloudFront distribution that's giving you the whatever.cloudfront.net, or when you're using the uh, application load balancers, they give you a DNS name. So essentially you can come in here and use the alias record to map specifically to those resources. And that alias record is going to help make sure that if something changes in the future, that it automatically performs that mapping for you. So I'll go ahead and include a link to this article as well in that description down below. But those are all of the record types for the AWS Route 53 service. So I hope you found this information helpful and useful. If you've got any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments down below. Be sure to check out that description. Also be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Number one, it helps me out with the algorithm, but it also is going to help make sure that you stay tuned to future videos. But until the next one comes out, you guys take care. We'll see you soon.